What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today we've got a really exciting video for you all. Full Grip team member Michael Pramowat just finished second place at the Portland Regional Championships. It was expanded format, played a unique Pidgeotto deck, Pidgeotto Control in expanded format. He was nice enough to do a video for us. We're going to feature it here on the channel where he discusses his deck list as well as his tournament run with Pidgeotto Control in expanded format. Enjoy. Hey everyone, this is Michael Pramwatt uh, coming to you with my second place uh, Pidgey deck at the Portland Regional Championship. So I had a pretty good run uh, this event. Uh, I uh, started uh, day once with at 7-1-1 and then uh, went on to make top 8 with a 10-2-2 uh, record. Uh, and uh, let me just go ahead and break down the deck list for you guys. So... Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that there's not actually that many Pokemon in the deck. Uh, there's only 14 of them, and it's all really core cards for control. Uh, Orangaroo, three Orangaroo, uh, four Pidgeys, four Pidgeotto, a Giraffe, a Ditto as like a fifth Pidgey, and then the odd card is the Mimikyu GX. So uh, I'll go. Let's just get into the Mimikyu GX. Uh, this card. Uh, I didn't use it once the entire tournament, but uh, everyone else who played the deck used it a ton. Um, that's probably just due to me getting like uh, good matchups slash like uh, being in good spots with my uh, full hand combo, which I'll get into in a little bit. But uh, this card is pretty cool. Uh, it knows Perplex, which is not bad. Uh, let's snuggle and fall. Never use that attack, but Dream Fear GX, uh, that's a attack that is pretty cool. It lets you shuffle one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into their deck. Uh, so you can't really control their top deck when you do this attack, but uh, it, it lets you remove a Pokemon that you cannot deal with. Uh, and hopefully they just don't draw it. So that's the idea for this card. Uh, it used to be an Articuno GX, which is more traditional in these type of decks, but uh, uh, with the rise of both Weavile and Oranguru and Turbo Dark, uh, this is like one way to deal with both of them at once. Uh, you'll notice that I'm running the bad Pidgeys. Uh, there are some better Pidgeys. Uh, this is the worst one, uh, and but this is what I ran on my deck list. Uh, this is the second best one. And uh, the best Pidgey is actually uh, Peck Off from Flashfire. Uh, you should be running two of these and uh, two Collect Pidgeys as like a split, but I couldn't get any Peck Offs and I don't think the Pidgeys really matter too much. Uh, one, one card I wish we could have added is maybe something to evolve off Ditto, uh, but that's kind of a hindsight kind of thing. But overall, the, the Pokemon line, really straightforward. Uh, you can really just get in there with Giraffe, Orangu really early, and then you just can't kind of go, go, go. Uh, so the Trainer Engine is actually much more unique than uh, normal control lists. So one thing you'll notice is that there are no ball cards. Uh, there's zero. Uh, and your main search cards are going to be through Trainer's Mill, Battle Compressor, uh, and then the supporter cards that will search for stuff. But let's just go through the items right now. So you have, uh, as a four ofs, you have Compressor, Trainer's Mail, and VS Seeker. Uh, so Compressor is just really to get rid of all the junk in your deck. Normally Zor can do this just by trading, but uh, because Airmail doesn't function like that, uh, you have to have some way to get rid of the spare cards in your deck that you don't want to get like end into or things like that uh trainer's mail again most of the your deck you have 42 trainers in your deck so it's always going to hit something and vs seeker you play there's 18 supporters in this deck so it's effectively 22 with vs seeker which is a lot uh let's go into the more individual items uh one of the big mvps of the tournament was captivating pokepuff uh a lot of people are running like Marshadow Let Loose, Shaman, Dedenne, this card, grab them all from their hand onto the bench, and then it could bench lock them, which means that they can't play any more Pokemon because their bench is full. So this card was really good. Um, it also, like, at uh, negating threats preemptively. Uh, 
super good card. It also had the added effect of letting you look at their hand. So sometimes you would like put a shaman onto their bench, notice that was, a, that was their only draw card, and then you start using your chip chip ice axe and uh, your trick shovels to just actually lock them at like th right there. Really powerful card, uh, great addition to the deck. Uh, the next thing is the trick shovel and pick, uh, chip chip ice axe. These cards are really good. They're just to control the top deck. Uh, the order you would want to do that in is you want to do trick shovel and to see if you like the card or not. If you don't like the card, you discard it. And then you would use chip chip ice axe. And the reason why you do this in this order is because it goes four cards deep as opposed to going uh, just chip chip and then ice axe, which is like, I guess you can discard the card that you want them to and then give them a blind card. But you, you would do chip chip, you do chip chip last, trick shovel first, four cards deep. Most people didn't get out of that lock ever. Um, and even if they did, even if the top four cards were all good for them, you can still use Dowsing Machine for another chip chip. So that way you get to look at uh, four cards go, uh, deep. And if they're all good, then uh, you get to look at two more additional cards because the one card on top from chip chip and then two additional new cards. And then hopefully by the end of all of that, something was bad for them. <laughs> Uh, usually never, I, I think, I, I think that only happened once for me, maybe twice. Uh, but it's extremely rare for that to happen. Uh, and then, uh, one field blower, just get rid of Garbotoxin, Stretcher, more Rangaroo, more Giraffe. Uh, two reset stamps, uh, two reset stamps are really good. Um, it's, it's a part of, it's a really big part of the hand combo. So... That's why it's at two, and yeah, that's it. that's it for the items. One of the uh, dowsing machine is definitely the uh, the best a spec. It's better than computer search. It lets you reuse anything. It gets you lets you get back stadiums, which is really big, as there's only three in here, and you really need to lock one of them for the most part. And uh, yeah, let's. Get into the supporters. So Colrus, just really good draw card and expanded. Faba, uh, a lot of DC DCE decks have been coming back. So like Night March, uh, Zoark, uh, Faba gets rid of those perfectly. Uh, Gladion, there's a lot of one ofs in the deck, so you know, so you don't prize anything. Two Lieutenant Surges strategy, uh, and this is part of the handlock combo. So you'll notice that the handlock combo has involves reset stamp. Surge, Mars, and then Chip Chip and Trick Shuffle. So uh, that's why those cars are all at two because that you don't want to really prize any of them. And uh, you can, it's fine for you to only have access to one Mars or one Surge, but you want access to either of those because you have VS Seeker. So you really don't want to prize any, you don't want to prize both of those. So that's why they're all at two. Uh, the chip chip and ice and the trick shovel, even though they're both one copies, uh, you can make do with either or. Uh, you can make do with the chip chip. You, doing it with uh, trick shovel is a little bit more difficult because you don't get to see as many cards. Um, but yeah, uh, Plumeria, just get rid of energy on the bench. You also have a lot of cards you build up uh, during your resources and then like you have a lot of fluff cards uh so you'll have to get like extra, extra pidgeotos extra elms extra winonas uh great to get rid of those with plumeria uh and battle compressor and then juniper really good draw card uh grunt flare grunt still uh really good it's really good versus gladi or guardian uh because they leave a lot of energy on the active sometimes and then the way to accelerate your deck out process is Team Rocket's handiwork. Uh, I, I think I probably flipped 50% over the event, but uh, it was definitely kind of streaky. So I would go like a bunch of tails, a bunch of heads. Uh, it was not, it will be much better as Bryson Man when that comes out or when that becomes legal. And then uh, Winona, the, really the MVP of the deck. Uh, this, this card literally gets everything. 
Uh, it gets Ditto, gets Pidgey, gets Pidgeotto, gets Oranguru. The only two cards it can't get are Giraffe, Giraffe Egg, and uh, Mimikyu GX. But you can airmail into those anyways. So not a big deal for those. And Winona just really sets up the deck. Uh, your ideal turn one is Winona into turn two Winona. And to even turn three Winona, you just like, you just keep winona in, And then after you've gotten your Pidgeotos online... You want to use Battle Compressors to get rid of all the extra Elms and Winona. Because uh, they're just kind of taking up space in your deck and you don't want to have your airmails. You don't want to airmail until Winona after you've gotten all your Pidgeys online. And then Energy, pretty standard. One Recycle and then three Fairy. Uh, Again, the Fairy is just the power of the Mimikyu, which I never use the entire tournament. Uh, It's kind of situational, but... If you hit, those situations do happen, so yeah, you got to be prepared for that. Um, and let me go into the my matchups for a little bit. Uh, so I went seven one one in day one of Swiss, and I played against five dark boxes, t- or t- five turbo darks rather, uh, two Gladion Azor Azor uh, Flareon deck, and then one Buzz Garb Shrine. Um, Buzzgarb Shrine is auto win pretty much. You like it's very difficult to lose. Uh, you have Faba to get rid of anything. You got Flare Grunt. You, you you can bring up anyone. Like you have Silent Lab to turn off a Ranguru. Um, you can just lock them really easily. They can't really stop you. They can't really take more than one prize per turn. So you can really just lock them at two or one pretty much at will. Matchup is super favorable. Um, an interesting game. I I had two pretty interesting games in Swiss. Uh, one game I was against uh, Turbo Dark, where I actually lost a series 0-1 uh, because he ran a Mega Tyranitar. Or I'm not sorry, Mega, not Mega Tar. Tyranitar Mega Sableye GX tag team, and that really messed me up because I had to keep my deck above 15 cards, and then I had to. Also, take into account, what if he just does it? So I can... What if he just uses the GX move? And so what ended up happening was... Because my deck was so big, I couldn't find Reset Stamp to stamp him when he he was at 2 to lock him. And then I ended up losing that game. And then I locked him in game 2, but I did not have enough time to finish the series. It came. I was on turn 2 of time... And then I had to hit two heads out of four on handy on search handiwork handiwork, and I only got one, so I, I lost that series uh, instead of getting a tie. And then I played against uh, a Guardian deck uh, in round nine, uh, which had a one Ditto Prism Star and then one Garbodor Garbotoxin, and I was already. Not I didn't open Winona or any good supporters, so I was already probably going to lose this game anyways. But then he used uh, <laughs> he used uh, Garbotoxin with Magical Miracle GX to put my hand to zero and I uh, ability lock me. So then I drew for the turn. It was a Pidgey, and I was just like, "All right, man, I'm done. Uh, I can't. I can't, my deck is too big. Uh, I'll just go to the next game," which I did win game two, and then we ended up tying. Uh, and then. Uh, on day two, I ended up playing him again in round 10 because we had Drew in round nine, so our records were identical. And I had won the set uh, 1-0. Uh, I think I was on the path to winning game two, but uh, we never finished. And then uh, played against a Mew Box deck, which the deck is not prepared to fight. Uh, we had we had talked about adding a uh, Bench Barrier Mew uh, because you can search for it with Elm and... And that ended up not getting, that ended up not making the cut. With, but I wish I did play it because it would have made my, uh, some a lot of my decks, a lot of my matchups a lot easier. So against like Tur- uh, Turbo Dark, what they should be doing is using Night Spear, and doing like ninety to a Ranguru, and then like thirty to a Pidgey, and then like uh, knocking out Pidgeotto, killing the other Pidgeotto with the that had the thirty on it, maybe like. Leave the orang, put the orangu on the bench. Bring up Pidgeotto, knock out both. Like they just, just be really annoying with two prize knockouts. Um, and yeah, that so the Mew would have helped a lot 
against those decks. And it would have helped a lot against uh, Alolan Marowax uh, Lost Boomerang GX, which uh, does 50 damage and then puts two, if it knocks out anyone, it puts them into the Lost Zone, which is the actually the worst effect of, of the attack. Um, uh, so they would just use uh, Giratina Distortion Door to put one damage counter on, on a Pidgey and then knock two Pidgeys out. It was really brutal. I lost game one like that. And then, but uh, Mew Box can be a little clunky. So game two, uh, I I ended up uh, lost zoning, or using guess, Get Lost to lost zone all of his attackers. And then he conceded in the game three. Uh, I, po- I pokey puffed and I saw, I caught him with a dead hand and then won from there. Uh, so then I played against the eventual winner of the tournament, Ian Rob, and I lost uh, 0-2, yeah, uh, pretty convincingly. I think that deck is just, he has too many anti-controlled cards in his deck, so he just kind of ran me over. Uh, and then Night March in round four, which I this deck auto wins. All you have to do is just play Faba four times and the game is over. Uh, yeah, that's all, all you got to do. And then I ID'd my last round. So then in top eight, played against Pika. Uh, we, we only played one game and I won. Uh, I won it. I prized both uh, Chip Chip and Handiwork. And when I used Gladion, I just had to pick the Chip Chip because it's a safer lock than the Handiwork. So uh, the, the deck out process was very slow and it just took a while and then by the time i won that game we just uh it was over and then uh top four played against guardian the same guardian that i played in rounds nine and ten so this is our third time playing uh this is the maximum amount of times you can play someone uh in in a tournament and uh we played three times this event uh so by this time we had we were both very familiar with our each other's deck, and I won 2-0 because the matchup is still favored for me because of Mars. I can just lock anyone. If he has Garbotoxin in play, I can lock the Garbotoxin. Uh, if he gets Aromatisse out, then I have, and he starts taking knockouts, then I have, I can double Flare Grunt him or double Pomeria or double Faba or some kind of combination in between to run him out of energy. Because the deck only plays 11, and they need, if I can get rid of 9 energies, then I win. But that's not that's assuming they didn't even prize any or discard any on the way. So, uh, pretty good matchup there. Uh, he kept going for the Garbotoxin Magical Miracle play, but uh, that, that play is a little inconsistent. So, it took him some time, and then I would just like throw in a Flare Grunt here and there while after I set up. Uh, make sure my deck was perfect to counteract Magical Miracle Garbotoxin. So I would have a Field Blower in there. Uh, I got rid of all the fluff cards. I got rid of all the cards that like disrupt his top deck because uh, the I'm not trying to control his deck. I'm just trying to draw cards at that point out of Garbotoxin. And I can worry about uh, just, you know, locking them later. So like I would get rid of all the stadiums. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I just realized there is a issue with the deck list. Uh, it is actually not two power plant. It is one power plant, and um, what's the last card? It is something I overlooked. Let's see. Um, ah, it is Guzma. I did not put a Guzma on the deck list, so. Yeah, the last card is Guzma. Uh, let me just go ahead and add that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Uh, and Guzma's super good, too. So, yeah. That, uh, but, that yeah, that was my event. Uh, this is the final deck list uh, right here. And then the Guzma has been properly put into the list. Uh, my bad on that one. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little deck breakdown slash tournament report. Um, oh, and then in the finals, I did get bodied really hard. You can watch that on stream. Uh, game one, 
I got bodied pretty badly, and then I had prize counter catcher, so I couldn't bring up uh, Marshadow, and then and then finally use Mimikyu to use Dream Fear on a Rangiru with a power plant in play. Because if I do all that and put him to zero, then I think I can win. But he gets one random top deck, so there's that. Um, but I ended up not being able to do it. And I lost. But yeah, that's just how it is. And then game two, I dead drew. Like I literally went a Rangaroo pass. Or went a Rangaroo callers for two pass. And uh, he just right is beating for 120. And it was really sad. But that's that's just how it is sometimes. So uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and then you can look out for me in Brazil, which I will be playing the standard format. So have at that. See ya.